The U.S. economy growing at its fastest pace in nearly two years, third quarter GDP rising at an annual rate of 4.9 percent. That marks a major acceleration from the second quarter as consumers boosted spending despite the rising rate environment. The latest data once again defying predictions of a slowdown. So could we be in the clear when we're talking about the economy? Joining us now, we want to bring in Bren Schutte, Northwestern Mutual Management, a mutual wealth management company, chief investment officer. Brent, it's great to see you again. So lots of questions about what this number could mean. Obviously, we know what's backward looking, but when you take a look at where we are today, the recent econ data that we're getting out on inflation, the recent data that we're seeing from consumers, what we're hearing from consumer stable, consumer discretionary companies this earnings season. How does that set us up here as we head into 2024? I, I think you hit the key word there where you said this is backward looking data and that's really, really important to think about. I think as you think about the future, um, I don't think the full impact of the rate hikes have hit yet. And so if you think about the US consumer, they've been largely insulated in many cases from the rate hikes because two thirds of consumer debt is mortgage debt. But that will eventually reprice. Credit card debt now carries a 21% interest rate. Auto loans are at 8%. Uh, you're seeing student loan repayments. And so as you continue to think about this, it's going to continue to erode the consumer's condition. And let's not forget that companies had termed out debt, which is now coming due, and those rates are going higher. And so all in all, I continue to see a challenging macro picture heading forward, uh, which to me leads to an ultimate recession sometime in the not-too-distant future. Okay, that's just what I was going to ask, Brent. Does Does not in the clear mean recession and, and how soon and how deep or, or shallow on the other side? Yeah, I, I think certainly the economy has uh, been stronger than most thought, but that comes back to my commentary about the U.S. consumer being more uh, or less insulated or more insulated from rate hikes because of the reality is that most of us have fixed rate mortgages. Um, I, I think eventually you'll have a recession. Timing is uncertain, but you're seeing these excess savings also wear off. And so I think in the next six to 12 months, you will see a recession. I still think it will be mild. But keep in mind, every time the Fed raises interest rates, you risk having a deeper recession because we don't know. And I don't think you've seen the full impact already of the five and a quarter of rate hikes we've already had. And so still a mild recession, uh, but certainly uh, with risk to the upside if the Fed keeps hiking. So, Brent, it looks like the downside risks here continuing to grow. We already have the NASDAQ now just falling into correction territory this week. What does that then mean in terms of the pressure that we could see not only on tech, but really the broader market? Certainly, I think tech has held up the market. When people talk about the market being up, it's really concentrated in a few stocks. The broader market's actually already down. Look, bond yields uh, on investment grade bonds are 5.7%. The S&P 500 trades at 18 times forward earnings that are higher than what they were uh, previously, which I don't think is going to come to fruition. I think investors need to think about fixed income and not on the front end of the curve, but more towards the middle and long end of the curve or longer into the curve, because I think there's good value there now. Certainly, there are tons of risks that are out there, but I think real yields on that uh, on that debt, if you think about 5.7 versus 2% where the Fed's target is, which I think they'll eventually get to, you have quite a bit of room for appreciation uh, in the coming years. Do you believe that if, if we were to see uh, a mild recession, would it be because of policy or would it be because of factors that the Fed can't control? I mean, we're continuing to watch some of the gyrations in, in oil prices, at least over the past few weeks here as well. And, and knowing that there's broader geopolitical uh, tension that has and conflict that has certainly arisen that is now at the top of many CEOs watch list right now for a matter that they need to navigate as well. I think it's a combination of all of the above, but um, but I think a, a lot of it has to do with the Fed tightening policy and then the reality that the money supply in the U.S. is actually shrinking now. And so if you think about history, when the money supply shrinks, uh, we've done that on three times on a year over year basis. And each of those led to a recession. Look, the Federal Reserve is not going to take the liquidity tourniquet they put on the U.S. economy off until they see the final embers of inflation burn out. That final ember is the labor market, which is too tight. And so if they're targeting that labor market and you start to see job losses, which this morning there was evidence in the continuing claims number that it's becoming harder to become reemployed. If that ends up happening and labor starts faltering, that's where you call it a recession. That's where I think we're going to end up. So, Brent, what should investors be doing then right now? How should they then be adjusting their portfolios or positioning themselves for the next several months? Well, certainly uh, we think about longer term here, so I don't want investors adjusting their portfolio too much. Yeah. Uh, but we do certainly make tilts. And so I, I think 
that thing that investors are ironically most fearful of right now is not the equity market. They're fearful of the bond market because they've seen losses there for the first time uh, in, in many, many years, and many of them didn't think that could happen. Um, but now bonds represent good value. And so I would think about perhaps positioning some there, not riding in the front end of the yield curve and moving out a little bit, uh, because who knows where rates are in two years from now, and you want to lock in some of these rates at these levels. And I don't think it's all lost in the equity markets. Parts of the equity markets, the small cap S&P 600, are already down 27% from their uh, 2021 highs. They traded 11.8 times earnings in the future, a level that I haven't seen very often in my 30 years of doing this. And so there are opportunities to tilt your portfolio. Please don't just concentrate in the S&P 500, which is the asset class that has done the best. Think about those other parts of the market that are cheap and possibly have already discounted some sort of recession. Brent, I call it BS. You don't even look 30 years old, man. Uh, whatever <laughs> conditioner, you have to put skin the creamer. There, my my I, initials are BS. <laughs> yeah, look, same here, man. Gotta love it. <laughs> Brent Shu, yep. who is the Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management Company Chief Investment Officer and uh, really good procurer of skin serums as well, joining us here this morning. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Brent. Appreciate it.